Good evening, Fernwood. It is your gentle viewer, Neil, here, and it's time for us to watch and react to another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are watching episode 254 today from Thursday, March 24th, 1977. Let's take a look at yesterday's episode. Mac and Charlie were catching up with Tex, who had recently been appointed police chief. They're all members of the GGG, though only Tex understands that it is a racist and bigoted organization. They get a visit from Howie, who is on the trail of a white supremacist organization that he doesn't know is the GGG. And to that, Charlie dismisses the idea that there could be a white supremacist hate group in Fernwood. And of course, Tex tries to throw him off the trail as well. Then Vernon comes in with some pamphlets that feature some subtly racist ideology. And when Howie asks about the pamphlets, Vernon obfuscates the whole situation. Then Howie comes clean about the threatening phone calls that he has been receiving and says that he is honestly scared. And then Charlie reacts that maybe their organization should get involved. Not realizing that the greater guardians of good are the people sending the threats. Vernon says it's probably not any of the GGG's business, and then Howie lets on that he has a lot of research that he's done. So Vernon tells Tex that he should take care of Howie's situation. Over at the Shumway residence, Mary and Kathy are trying a new tactic to get Martha to admit to her kleptomania. Mary says that it will help her get out her aggression, and Kathy is skeptical. Mary explains to Martha that she will let out her anger, by punching on the bag, and then demonstrates what it means to be angry at the idea of high prices. And Martha lets out her anger towards her inattentive daughters. Then Mary switches angles and says it's now time to admit some bad secret. And Mary and Kathy each admit some mild things from their past. And when it comes to Martha, all that she can admit is that she feels shameful for the daughters that she has that did these awful things. And then she walks out, and Mary and Kathy wonder what the heck they do next. Over at their apartment, Kathy reads a magazine while peering over at Howie, who is deep in research mode. She wonders how, after living together for weeks, Howie has never tried to have sex with her. And Howie gets a bit defensive, explaining that he doesn't want to get his heart broken, because when you tell a woman that you like her, she gets the upper hand. And Kathy says that she doesn't want to hurt him and then pushes him to agree to a date that they will move forward which is the day after tomorrow and then we're back at the shumways where george is looking for a midnight snack and the jeter's maid lila is lurking outside after george goes back to bed lila sneaks in looking for the diary that she was using to blackmail the jeters and she hears someone approaching from the outside so she hides under a table and then Mary Hartman sneaks in and goes to the cabinet where she knows that Martha hides all the stuff and empties it out into a paper bag. And the last item is the diary, which Lila sees. Then George comes out with a shotgun and exclaims that he nearly shot Mary. But Mary explains that she's trying to return all of the stolen objects to their rightful owners. Then George and Mary both leave and Lila sneaks back out and says she's going to visit Mary Hartman's place very soon. And after she leaves, George comes back because his stomach is unsettled. He puts in some Alka-Seltzer, and he seems to notice the presence of something lurking. And everyone, that was a suspenseful episode. I suspect we will have some things to watch today, so let us get to it. afternoon. Well, honey, they, a baron broke on the line. And they're going to be two hours fixing that thing. Yeah. And I just said to myself, now what would Charlie Haggers do if he had two hours to spend, but spend it at home with his ever-loving wife? Who is back on the track to superstardom after a little sidestep in amnesia and all like that. Oh. Mm, darling, it's so great. Just... It's just like the old times, you know, you and me and the tape recorder and everything. I knew it'd get back that way if we just waited long enough, you know, and I kept praying upstairs to him. And I'm... I'm 
I'm sorry. It sorrows me that I may have sorrowed you with my friendship with Mac, honey. Oh, Charlie, that is so big of you to say that. I mean, it sorrows me, you know, that I acted so jealous and everything. And Well, I'm not going to stick my nose in Mac's business no more by trying to fix him up with all them gals and everything. Because, you know, like my Uncle Pooh said, I'm going to keep my snap out of the other guy's waller. Now, that's it. Now, the good Lord and provider will zap Mac with a love bug when he's supposed to be zapped. And that's all there is to it. Speaking of that, I think that I will... I will... Stay home tonight, and maybe we can figure out something to do together, you know, like uh, something like we used to do a whole heck of a mighty lot of, like... Woo, 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 shine! <laughs> well, we're back on the track. Woo, 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 woo. Yes, we're back, back on, on the track. track. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, well, we're the back crowd's on. gonna holler and come to our door. The superstar woman's back on the track once more. Mm. I got an idea. What? How about a little afternoon back on the track? Woo, 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 Oh, you mean right here in this posturepedic recliner? And that's a little uh, avant-garde, isn't it? You come here, you devil angel, you. That's Mac. I can tell because his cute little old pleasingly plump finger always kind of jams the doorbell button. Well, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't ask him over. Hey, Charlie! Hey, How you doing, buddy? Hey, man. Good to see you, partner. I seen your old car out there. I figured you might be on. Hey, Red How you doing, darling? Uh, Listen, I didn't have no reason to come by. I just thought I'd, uh... Uh, you on you on lunch break here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Well, listen, you know, I figured you might be because, you know, lunch at home is a lot better than out of some, you know, diner, some pale like that. A well, actually, actually, uh, Mac, uh, see, we, it's, it's, it's more like a, a business appointment, like, I mean, because, uh, we had to work on some new material of Loretta's, which, uh, you know, I've been neglecting since uh, I've been neglecting my job as her manager, you know, just lately on account of the GGG meetings and all like that. Uh, you, you mean you got a new song? Can I hear it? No, I, it's well, just, I... just kind of, it's, uh, it's a little in that strange, difficult period, you know, where it's a little too personal. It's like, you know, it just started to be born and like, you know, it's... Uh, no offense or nothing, Mac, but no. right now, you know, it's just, I, it needs a little bit of polishing before I sing it to outsiders, you know. Hey, listen, I, I get it now. I, I understand here. I, you know, my mom didn't raise no stupid children. Listen, I, uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you two love birds alone here. And uh, listen, uh, it's, uh, bye. Bye. Bye, Mac. Now, he is a nice man. I love him. He's just like a brother to me. Yeah, that's but sweet. there is some kind of a difference, you know, between the the intimacy and the sweetness and closeness of a brother and a wife. What I'm talking about here is a, what I'm talking about is a wife. You know what I mean? There's a certain difference there. What is the Lord trying to tell us? I don't know. Charlie. Hi, I just um, I just came over to say hi. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi. I saw your car in the driveway, so um, gosh, I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Oh no, Kathy, yeah. no. I we were yeah. just uh, saying goodbye. I was uh, getting ready to go back to the plant. See, we just uh, just finished up um, oh, lunch. Lunch. Ah, uh, was there something you wanted, hon? Oh, well, I was wondering, could I um, talk to you alone? Oh, sure you can, Kathy. I'll tell you right now, however. Charlie no, and I no, was honey, going no, over some business. No, no, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Never mind, doll. I do believe that the, uh, the good Lord intended for me to spend my energies this afternoon building automobiles. Take a rain check on that. Woo! Nah, huh? Bye, bye, baby bye. boy. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Kat. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready. 
<gasps> You've got to tell me more about Mac. Really? You gonna hear some more about him? Well, all right. What happened to Howie? Oh, well, you see, he's really busy with his work, and, and he's really, well, he's no good at... Look, you see, career men, they make lousy lovers. And he, he's working really hard, and he won't let me in and, and tell me anything about his secret investigation. And I'm not sure I really love him. You're not? Kathy, it's so hard for me to understand how a person could live with somebody and not love him. But then, of course, I mean, far bit for me. I mean, you have a lot more experience in that field than I would. So, I mean, I believe you in everything, you know. That'd be a great idea for a song. I live with him, but I don't love him. I only love him because I live with him. There are a few inconsistencies uh, in that, but and it needs work, but I think it's a definite possibility. Kathy, I ain't just tickle pink. You want to get to know Mac better. And, hon, I'm going to do everything I can to send Big Mac your way. Oh, it's great. Thank you, Loretta. Listen, I'm going to go now. You go back to what you were doing. I'm sorry to interrupt, but thank you a lot. You're just my bestest friend. Well, we're back on the track. woo Yes, we're back on the track. Woo-hoo-hoo. Hello, Big Al. Rush me out of booze, will you? <coughs> oh, it's you. What brings you in here? Well, I don't know. How's Mrs. Shumway? Oh, she's going through one of her European moods, drinking espresso coffee, crying through lace handkerchiefs. You know women. Yeah, I know. I don't. I mean, I don't. I mean, I really don't. You don't what? I don't know women. Mr. Shumway, I really don't know women. Well, how could you? I mean, how could you know them? I mean, they're very fickle. They run according to their hormones. Mr. Shumway, do you think we can have a talk? Man to man. What the hell do you think we're doing now? No, you see, sure, but my, my problems, my problems go deeper than that. Yeah, I, I have known women spiritually, but I have never known a woman biblically. Biblically? Yeah. Oh, you mean... Give me a double, huh? Yeah, give me one, too. Well... I mean, <laughs> that's hard to believe. I mean, how could you not? I don't know. It's just, it never happened. You know, you got to respect women, right? You know, there's got to be the right time and the right place and on the right mood. I, I never found the right girl in the right time. I was always, I was always afraid that they would laugh at me afterwards. <laughs> oh, boy, you sure don't know women. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's an ancient Irish banshee saying, a woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. They don't care about moods. They want a man that takes control. Listen, big, big tip. They may say no, but they always mean yes. Yes, yes. My friend, you are talking to George Shumway. Known in high school as All the Way Shumway. <laughs> How old were you when you first, uh... Um, oh, you mean, you when know, you first? Yeah. Oh, well, let's see. I guess it was with, uh, my best friend's housekeeper. I was about 12. No, or was it the English teacher? Uh, no, no, that was later, that was later. Ah! Madam Wu. <laughs> Madame Wu in the old red light district. <laughs> I used to tell my dad I was going over to Moore Grass. <laughs> oh, what a woman. What a woman. <laughs> Ring them oriental chimes. <laughs> you know, I was just a punk kid then. Couldn't have been more than 11. Of course. I've slowing up a bit now, but uh, I still... Maybe that's what I'll do. You think? Maybe I'll, uh, 
you know, come on strong, you know, really take over, take charge, get aggressive, you know? Hey, of course, of huh? course, you got to sow that wild oats while you still got it. Right. <laughs> right. Have another drink. <laughs> no more drinks, some way. I am going to go home, and I'm going to show Kathy who's boss. Sure, good. Who? No, wait. Wait a minute. Kathy? No, 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 no. You, you said... Listen, I thought you were talking about women. I didn't know you were talking about Kathy, you idiot. No, no. Oh, I ought to kill you. No, no. I'll kill you. No, no, no. Get off the baseball bat. Get off the baseball bat. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't read any more of that. Hello. Hey, Mary. Oh, Merle, oh, this is so totally humiliating that you of all people would choose this particular moment to call. Uh, Mary, listen, I I've got to talk to you. I've been, I've been trying to talk to you all week. No, I've wanted to talk to you too, Merle. I really have. It's just that something always seems to get in our way. Our marriages, I think. Uh, Mary, listen. Yeah. Tom came over here with the toys, the little chicken and the jump rope, everything. He came over here like a wild man. Now, he was, he was going to give them back to me. Of course, he took them all with him when he realized how, how foolish he was acting and everything. But I tell you, for a minute there, I thought he was going to go out of his mind. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, here comes a damn maid. I got to go. Tried to return my chicky? My life is getting as almost as interesting as Wanda's. and I could use a little more sleep, but I'm okay. Who is this? Oh, it's Lila. Oh. You, you remember the, the mayor and Wanda's best friend? No, I do, Lila. Listen, do you people over there do nothing but make phone calls? Well, um, Mary, uh, the reason I called is, now, I'm not one to talk behind somebody's back. But your mother stole my diary. Oh, no. Oh, Lila, that's terrible. Lila, I want to tell you something. She is not a thief. She's a klepto. And there's a difference. Now, I know that it must be very upsetting, very upsetting to lose a diary. Some I hear are very, very sensual. Have you seen it anywhere? Well, uh, actually, I, I do have a, a bag of, uh, you know, hot goods uh, right in front of me now. Let's see, I have a, uh, I have a rhinestone dog collar, and I have a, uh, oh, here it is. I have a, a replica of the uh, Empire State Building. Uh, uh, no, no diary here. I mean, I have a diary here, but uh, it, it, it is not with your name on it. Uh, it, it. It's a diary, but it has someone else's name on no, it. I'm no, sorry, no, 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 th that's my diary. That, that's my diary. That's the one your mother stole, and she switched it for a Mr. Boston's Guide to Mixed Drinks. Isn't that interesting? <gasps> Mary, you have that diary, and you're not going to give it to me? Oh, Mary, I'm going to have to, well, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to take you to court. Probably the Supreme Court. I, I, I really... Uh, Lila, look, I would really like uh, very much to discuss this problem with you at a much greater length and in much greater detail. But someone's at my door and you're shouting. All right? Bye. Howie. Howie. Hi. Come on in. You wanted to see me?
see me? Oh, Howie. Oh, do I want to see you? Now, come on in. Now, come on. I want you to have some fresh coffee. Expensive, but delicious. Do you know that this brand went up 21% overnight? But, Howie, the good news is that the sugar is down. The coffee is up, but the sugar is down. So I guess it all does balance out in the end, doesn't yeah, thanks. it? Thanks. I really could use some coffee. Mary? Yeah. Is that why you called me over to, to see you? Well, not really. No? Ask Kathy. Fine. Really? Are you sure she's fine? Mm -hmm. Because you know she really is trying to change her ways. I mean, but really. I mean, she's really trying to reform herself. And all I can tell you is, if you're coming on to her like an animal, it's a grave mistake. No, um, actually, Mary, that's, <clears throat> that's not the problem. See, um, see, I, I, I respect Kathy too much. Well, Harry, all I can tell you is, you know, you just never can have too much respect for a person. Right. Well, gee, I'm glad you're here. I am just so relieved that you're so genuine, you're so honest, and you're so scrupulous. <laughs> and since you are so genuine and honest and scrupulous, maybe you could help me with a little problem I'm having. Now, if you had a diary, I mean, not that anyone has, but if a diary loaded with some very hot and juicy material about uh, the most politically powerful family in town. Now, I'm uh, not going to mention names, but uh, the powerful people are my dearest friends. If the person in the possession of the diary read it, and if there were such a diary. Would you read it? Of course, of course not. I, I feel that privacy is America's greatest virtue. Really? Even as a reporter, you wouldn't read it? Mm. Of course not. Unless unless the contents of the diary were to be of good to the general public. Now, would the contents of this imaginary diary be of good to the American public? Well, it would make a great bestseller. But, of course, you know, I haven't read the contents, you know, so I wouldn't uh, know that. But uh, would you read them if they were to be of uh, great news value? Well, there is a difference between uh, uh, newsy and nosy, is there? You know, Kathy, Kathy mentioned that you might have some... Uh, brightly colored uh, throw pillows to donate right. to our grim That's and right. gloomy garret. And I'm very glad you remind me of it. I'm really glad you remind me of it. They're in the hall. I'm going to go get them. They're purple and red. I find them revolting. I'll be right back. Oh, that's great. That's terrific. Is that, is that all of them? Yeah, this uh -huh. is You got yeah. that? Uh, what? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think I got him. You got him? Mary. Okay, I just. You. Back yet, Thank there. you, yes. Back yeah. yet. Can you just yeah. stand yeah, you, This has really made my day, you know? Really? Mary, yeah, could you get the door? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. you just back your Mary? little cell phone out there. Yeah, I think, Mary? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad I came over. Well, I'm glad you did too. Yeah, bye bye. Bye.
nice kid. And so honest. A little offbeat. But so honest. <laughs> I like believing people are honest. Well, it looks like we are baking an intrigue pie, and this episode starts with Charlie and Loretta shifting gears because they've been kind of in a holding pattern for like a month at this point. And Loretta had been jealous of Mac and Charlie spending so much time together, and it didn't seem like that was going anywhere, and now it finally has, and in a weird kind of no scheme necessary kind of way. I think Charlie just needed to see what was going on in Loretta. So they are back in the mode that I've loved them most, which is just to be really sexually affectionate to each other. They get a visit from Mac, who at first I thought this was going to interfere with them, but no, Mac picks up on the energy too. His mama didn't raise no dummy. So he takes off and then Kathy shows up not having any understanding of the dynamics of the Hagger home for the last month because she has her own little bit and that is that she has some interest in Mac which is confusing and I understand there are several writers for the series but it feels like when Kathy is interested in Mac she is not interested in Howie and when Kathy is interested in Howie that's all she's interested in so I'm maybe a bit confused it seems like the writers are a little bit at cross purposes, but we'll just have to take it that Kathy is interested in two men at the same time. And then Howie, for his first scene of this episode, runs into George at the Capri Lounge and asks for some real talk, and he admits to George that he's never had sex with anyone. And then George essentially teaches him rape culture, that you should just take from women even if they say no. And I will say that there's some nuance involved, but that nuance is not what George is suggesting. And George has it turned on him when Howie says that he's going to take the advice he's gotten and use it for Kathy, which of course sets George off and, well, we get classic George. And then we have our final scene, which has lots and lots of beats in it. It starts with Mary reading the diary utterly shocked. She gets a call from Merle who reminds her that Tom came over with the gifts that Merle gave to Mary and was very angry. She briefly sorts those emotions but then is interrupted by Lila who is calling to find out about the diary. And Mary with the diary in hand says no she doesn't have Lila's diary since it didn't have her name in it. But Lila picks up what Mary is saying and escalates the situation. And then Howie shows up and Mary asks about the situation with Kathy. Again, the Kathy situation is confusing nowadays. And she offers the opposite advice that George did, but then also seems to hint that she has some secret information in a diary and seems to hint at how important or newsworthy it could be. She dodges it, but not very cleanly because it's clear exactly what she means. She hides the book that Howie had briefly had his hands on. Then Howie asks for the cushions and while she's getting them he rushes in and steals the diary. So we have a few different people who know what's going on here. We know that Lila is gonna be going out for um, Mary and we know that Howie now has this uh, scandalous news. And we end the episode with Mary thinking about how much she can trust people. So everyone, that was a shocking Thursday episode. I expect by tomorrow we're going to see some ramifications. Thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions down in the comments. Thank you for watching and reacting with me, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.